So a vet would come around to see these dogs, oh. hundreds of dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how many times? Twice a year. Twice a year yeah. for hundreds of working dogs. Yeah. And when dogs got sick, it wasn't an option to bring the dog to the vet. They would get hidden in the back of the kennel so people driving by wouldn't see it. We want to warn you about the images and details in our next story. This weekend, CTV's W5 investigates the dog sledding industry in Canada. It includes hidden camera footage of what life is like for the animals behind the scenes. Yeah, dog sledding has become a popular tourism industry in Canada with adorable dogs pulling sleds for paid customers. But W5 spoke with critics who warn about the welfare of these working dogs. For more on this, we're joined by CTV W5's Molly Thomas. Molly, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, tell us what you uncovered in this investigation. You know, you guys just saw that clip. That was Chantel Dosteller, who is a former musher. So that would be the driver of the dog sled, the, the person in charge of the primary care, care needs of the dogs. And she worked at a now defunct kennel that used to be in central Ontario. And, and she shared very openly about her experience, as you heard, you know, not happy with the vet care. She also told me that there was two of them working with 250 dogs in the summer. Didn't feel like that was enough hands on board. And, and what really bothered her was that most dogs only got an hour off their chain a month in the summertime. So that was a that was a really bothersome thing. Now, Chantel's not the only one. We talked to an animal activist, Francis Mativier. He went right across the country from BC all the way to Quebec, took his drone out, flew it up 66 times over 30 different kennels to just get a bird's eye view of what is happening on the ground uh, at these operations when dogs are not running and take a look. We have a clip of what he discovered. He says he found roughly 2,000 dogs tied to metal chains with nowhere to go, exhibiting troubling repetitive behavior. And from above, you can see all those little circles. And all these circles are dogs just going around and around nonstop. That's what they do pretty much all day. That's their lives. That's their lives. So when they're not uh, pulling sled for the company, to make profit from their chain to their pole. Uh, so Molly, thank you to you and your team for looking into this. You know, uh, across the country, and it varies on, uh, based on uh, various jurisdictions, the rules about dogs being tethered, uh, whether it's a dog being tethered to a tree in your backyard, that varies depending on where you live. Uh, what are the sled dog operators saying? Because I, I feel it, it is difficult for them to come up with a compelling defense that a dog be tethered for hours a day for months on end. You know, it's it's interesting because sled dog operators, first of all, I have to say, you know, they love their dogs. They're very passionate about their animals. That you can tell from every conversation you have with any anyone I've had in the business. Um, but they do think, you know, these are working dogs. And in Canada, they are working dogs. They're considered more like farm animals than uh, your household pet. And one uh, sled dog operator described it to me as, these are the Olympic athletes of dogs, right? They're stronger, they're faster, they're, they're built to sustain the winter conditions and, you know, they're just, they're just different. And so we have to consider them in that, in that length. Now in Canada, we don't have any national standards specifically for sled dogs. And I think that's part of the problem because a lot of sled dog operators are saying there's provincial rules in each province, which differ, which are generally animal welfare rules. And they don't really apply to our dogs because they're different. And then you have animal activists that are very upset saying, you know, we keep bringing this up. We're worried about the dogs. And so that's really the debate in our show of, of just the, you know, is this okay? Because most of the stuff that we show in our show is legal. It's legal across the country. So it's not like operators are doing something illegally, but it's just, you know, these critics are asking the question, is that okay? But the, the public and people's views have changed in the last, you know, 10, 20, 30 years about what's acceptable in terms of what's known as animal entertainment. So what you're telling us is what we see in your upcoming report tomorrow night is entirely legal. Did, did you identify any laws that were broken or... Or I, I, and I mean, you know, you acknowledge the dog operators uh, love their dogs. It, it seems mm -hmm. baffling when you see some of the, the images and the allegations here. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, I think that's that's where the 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 conversation has to start. As you said, animals for entertainment that has changed over time for different industries. I think this, you know, we're starting to have that conversation in Canada. Some people might remember, you know, just after the Vancouver Olympics in Whistler, there was this terrible story where more than 100 sled dogs were killed because tourism slowed down, right? Thousands of tourists left and they didn't have a use for those dogs. And in BC, they brought about, you know, the BC sled dog code of practice because they're like, this can't happen. And it provides, you know, the bare minimum standards for, you know, uh, tether legs, for euthanasia practices, uh, for veterinary care. And so that is the only province in our country that has something specifically entrenched in law for sled dogs. And I think that's part of the the problem in the country that you see because you have this discrepancy between people saying I don't like this about dogs about the way these sled dogs are being treated and the operators saying you don't even understand our dogs and so this this is what people I guess have to sit at home and decide for themselves yeah mm -hmm. Molly Thomas's investigative report uh, premieres tomorrow night at 7 p.m. on CTV thank you so much for joining us tonight thanks for having me guys